friends in story time. <laughs> it was a bright Sunday morning. Choo Choo was playing in the park when she heard a strange sound. making that sound. It must be a little animal that lives in the park. Choo Choo looked around and found a squirrel. Hello, little one. I am so happy to see you. But you're not looking very happy. You look like you're crying. Oh, your paw is hurt, isn't it? Choo Choo noticed that the squirrel's paw was injured. She immediately picked up the squirrel and took it with her. Don't worry, little one. I'll take you to someone who will help you feel better. Just as Choo Choo was leaving the park, Cusley called out to her. Choo Choo, wait! But Choo Choo didn't hear Cusley. Choo Choo hurried and took the squirrel to a veterinarian. A veterinarian is a doctor that treats animals. Doctor, I found this squirrel in the park. I think its paw is injured. Good work, Choo Choo. This squirrel is in a lot of pain. Just as Choo Choo and the vet were talking, Cusley came in. Choo Choo, that is my pet squirrel. Give it back to me. I'm sorry, Cusley. I had no idea. I brought the squirrel here because it was crying. Look, its paw is injured. I know that. The squirrel hurt its paw because it was trying to run away when I was putting it in a cage. Cusley, you shouldn't have done that. It isn't nice to hurt little animals or put them in cages. We can talk about that later, children. First, let's help this squirrel. The vet carefully put some medicine on the squirrel's paw. He then wrapped it with a clean bandage. In no time, the squirrel looked like it was feeling much better. The vet then spoke to Cusley. Choo Choo is right, Cusley. It isn't nice to hurt animals. This squirrel was in a lot of pain because of you. And the squirrel's home is in a tree not in a cage. Choo Choo, I think you should take this little squirrel back to where it belongs. Huh? Choo Choo lovingly carried the squirrel back to the park. She left the squirrel near a tree where some other squirrels were playing. You can go home now, little one. Take care. Choo Choo then pointed out to Cusley how happy the squirrel looked. Cusley, look! Doesn't the squirrel look happy to be here with its friends? You're right, Choo Choo. I shouldn't have hurt the squirrel. I promise I won't hurt any little animal again. Thanks to Choo Choo, the squirrel was back in the park living happily with its friends. And Cusley kept his promise. He never again hurt any little animal. Cusley was a fussy little boy. He always complained about everything. Oh! This cup! 
cushion isn't soft enough. Ew! I don't like this ice cream. Chica, the gift you gave me isn't nice at all. Huh? Cusley's mother was quite worried about him. Cusley grumbles and fusses about everything. He is very rude. He must learn how it makes others feel when he complains like that. One day, Cusley's mother came up with an idea. She spoke to Choo Choo and Cusley's other friends. I need your help, children. Cusley's mother then asked Cusley to invite his friends home. Cusley, why don't you invite your friends over tomorrow? You can all play together. I'll help you bake cookies and make chocolate milkshakes. Good idea, Mom! Cusley liked the idea. And so he invited all his friends. Please come over tomorrow. We'll have lots of fun. The next morning, Cusley took out all of his favorite toys and games. We're going to have fun playing with these things. He then baked cookies and made chocolate milkshakes. Mm. Cusley then made the living room very comfortable for his friends. Soon, Cusley's friends came by. Hi, Cusley. Hi, everyone. Come on, let's play. Cusley brought his toys and games out. These are my favorite toys and games. Let's play with them. But Chacha and Chica made a fuss. I don't want to play indoors, Cusley. I want to go out. Huh? I don't like your toys and games. They are boring. Huh? Cusley didn't know what to do. He felt like Chacha and Chica were being very fussy. Cusley then brought out the cookies and milkshakes he had made. Everyone, I've baked cookies and made chocolate milkshakes for all of us. I hope you like them. Everyone took a cookie and a milkshake. But to Cusley's surprise, they all started grumbling. This cookie is very hard. This cookie is too soft. My milkshake isn't milky. My milkshake needs more chocolate. Huh? Cusley was very disappointed to see his friends fussing and grumbling so much. All Cusley wanted to do was have fun with his friends. But they kept fussing and complaining about everything. It's cold here! No, it's too hot. I don't like these cushions. They aren't soft enough. Huh? Huh? Cusley couldn't understand why his friends were being so fussy. His head began to spin. And so he sat down and did nothing. Ah! Oh. After Cusley's friends left, Cusley went up to his mother. My friends 
friends were so fussy today. They complained about everything. I just didn't know what to do. I don't want to be like them. So I'm never going to fuss or grumble again. Cusley's mother's idea had worked. And Cusley never grumbled or fussed about anything again. Cha-Cha loved all sweets, but cookies and candies were his favorites. Mmm! I love cookies and candy. I could eat them every day. Choo-Choo and the other children would eat just one or two candies at a time. But Cha-Cha would eat many handfuls. Cha-Cha's mother often warned Cha-Cha not to eat so many sweets, but Cha-Cha wouldn't listen to her. Cha-Cha, you will get sick if you eat too many sweets at one time. Please don't eat so many. Just one more, Mom! Just one more! One day, when Cha-Cha's mother went out, Cha-Cha found a jar full of his favorite cookies. They were high up on the kitchen shelf. Ah! That jar has my favorite cookies. I'm sure Mom won't mind if I eat one or two. Cha-Cha stood on a stool and climbed up to the shelf. My favorite cookies! Cha-Cha opened the jar and popped a cookie into his mouth. Ooh! This cookie is delicious and sweet. I think I'll have one more. Cha-Cha had another cookie and then another. Ooh! Yum, yum, yum! Ooh! ooh. Cha-Cha couldn't stop eating the cookies. In no time, he had finished all the cookies in the jar. Uh-oh! I've eaten all the cookies. I better put the jar back and get down. When Cha-Cha's mother came home, she didn't notice the empty cookie jar. But soon, Cha-Cha's tummy began to hurt and he started to feel quite ill. my dear I'll take you to the doctor Cha-Cha he'll be able to tell us why you are feeling so ill huh? Cha-Cha knew why he was feeling ill he decided to tell his mother the truth mom I need to tell you something I ate all the cookies in that jar I think that's what's making me feel sick. Oh, Cha-Cha, I wish you hadn't eaten all the cookies. I've told you so many times, eating too much of anything is bad for you. 
And you also shouldn't be climbing up on stools and taking things down on your own. You could have fallen or gotten hurt. I'm sorry, Mom. Cha-Cha's mother gave Cha-Cha some medicine to drink. The medicine was bitter, but it made Cha-Cha feel better. Cha-Cha uh. promised never to eat too many sweets or touch anything without his mother's permission again. I will never eat too many sweets or touch anything without my mom's permission again. And you shouldn't either. Kesley was a very particular kid. He didn't like wearing colors. He only liked wearing black t-shirts and his favorite blue jeans. This yellow t-shirt would look good on you, Cusley. No, Mom! I don't like yellow! What about this green one? Or this red one? No, Mom! I don't like green or red! Cusley's mother was very disappointed. She wanted Cusley to at least wear some colors. Cusley! Why don't you wear some other colors for a change? I don't like any other colors, Mom. I only like black and blue. And so, Cusley wore black and blue almost every day. One day, Miss Dorothy, Cusley's teacher, brought a color wheel to class. This is... A color wheel, children. It has many different colors. They are all bright and beautiful. And they also have special meanings. I'm going to spin the wheel. And when it stops, I'll tell you more about the color that's next to you. Choo Choo was the first to stand near the color wheel. Miss Dorothy spun the wheel. The wheel went around and around. And when it stopped, the color red was next to Choo Choo. I'm standing next to red. Red is a bright and beautiful color. So many things we like are red. Like apples, cherries, and strawberries. Red also stands for love. Is that true, Miss Dorothy? No wonder I feel so loving when I wear red. Huh? Next, Cha-Cha took his turn at the color wheel. Miss Dorothy spun it around again. And when the wheel stopped, the yellow was next to Cha-Cha. Yellow is a cheerful color. So many things we like are yellow. Like sunflowers, bananas, and buttercups. Yellow stands for happiness and hope. I always feel cheerful when I wear yellow. Huh? Then, Chiku took her turn at the color wheel and Miss Dorothy spun it around. When it stopped, the green was next to Chiku. Green! Green is a lovely color. So many things we like are green. Like grass and leaves. Vegetables, like peas and broccoli, are green, too. Green stands for growth and friendship. I always feel like smiling when I wear green. <laughs> huh? 
Now it was Chica's turn. So Miss Dorothy spun the color wheel again. When it stopped, the orange was next to Chica. Orange! Orange is a warm and wonderful color. So many things we like are orange. Like the sun, oranges, and pumpkins. Orange stands for warmth and joy. I feel happy when I dress in orange. Huh? Then, Miss Dorothy spun the wheel again. Tesli was standing near it this time. And when the wheel stopped, the white was next to Cusley. White? White is a charming color. So many things we like are white. Like snow, doves, and the cottony clouds in the sky. White stands for goodness. I always feel kind when I wear white. Huh? When Cusley went home that day, his mother had his black and blue clothes ready. Cusley, please change your clothes. I've set out your favorite ones. Thanks, Mom. But I'd like to wear some other colors today. Other colors? Yes, Mom. Miss Dorothy told us how special all the colors are. So I want to wear them all now. <laughs> That's wonderful, Cusley. Cusley learned how special all the colors are. And so he started wearing them all. Hooray! And he found out that wearing them made him feel special too. Cha-Cha was a talented little boy. But he would get disheartened when he couldn't do something easily. And so if something was challenging, he would give up very quickly. Hooray! I can't wait to try out my new roller skate. Cha-Cha, try again! It takes a while to get used to roller skates. No! I'm never gonna roller skate again! Cha-Cha's parents were worried about Cha-Cha. They wished he wouldn't give up so easily when things were hard, because he was missing out on many fun things. One day, Cha-Cha's mom spotted a spider in the garden. Oh, look! A little spider! The spider was trying to build a web for its home. But each time the spider tried to connect its thread from one wall to the other, the thread fell short. But the spider didn't give up. It kept on trying harder and harder. I must show this spider to Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha's mom brought him over to watch the spider. Together, the two of them watched until the spider finally succeeded in building its web. Yay! Come on, spider! Don't give up! Hooray! You did it! 
Cha-Cha's mom then showed him some ants in the yard. They were struggling to carry scraps of food that were much bigger than them. Look at these ants, Cha-Cha! Even though they are really tiny, they are able to carry food scraps that are much bigger than them. Huh? But they are so tiny! Yes, but notice, no matter how big the challenge, they just don't give up. You can be like them too, Cha-Cha. Remember these ants and don't lose hope. Keep trying until you succeed. Cha-Cha's mom then suggested he try the roller skates again. Cha-Cha, why don't you try the roller skates one more time? You may fall, but if you keep trying, like the ants and the spider did, I'm sure you'll learn to skate very well. Okay, Mom! Cha-Cha decided to try the roller skates again. Ow! He did fall a few times. Cha-Cha kept on trying, and he learned soon he was skating very well. Look, Mom! I can skate! Hooray! Cha-Cha had a lot of fun skating. Whee! He was proud that he didn't give up and instead kept on trying until he finally succeeded. One day, Miss Dorothy made an announcement in the classroom. Children, we are going to have a drawing competition tomorrow. Each one of you will have to select a shape and you will have to draw things of that shape whoever draws the best will win a prize all the children were very excited i'm going to draw things that are square and i'm going to draw things that are rectangles the things i draw will be ovals choo choo was very confused she wondered which shape she should choose. Hmm. Chiku's going to draw square things. Chika's going to draw rectangular ones. And Cusley's drawing will have ovals. Which shape should I choose? Hmm. When Choo Choo went home, she told her mother about the drawing competition. Mom? There's a drawing competition tomorrow. I have to draw things that are a certain shape. Which shape should I choose? Choo Choo's mother was very helpful. She helped Choo Choo problem solve. Choo Choo, why don't you take a look around and see what shapes you notice in the world around you? Then you can start drawing whatever you like best. Good idea, Mom. So Choo Choo started to look around. The TV is a rectangle. The rug is a square. The watermelon on the table is round. I know what I'll draw. I'll draw a round watermelon. Choo Choo, can you think of other things that are round and interesting to look at? Come on, put on your thinking cap and try to figure out what they are. You can draw some of them. Choo Choo thought about it, and soon, many round things came to mind. The sun is round. The moon is round. Cakes and pizzas are round too. 
the wheels on the school bus and Daddy's car are round too. A baby's face is nice and round. The balloons we love to play with and the ice cream scoops we love to eat are round too. Choo Choo decided to draw some of these things for the drawing competition. Then, Choo Choo's mother had another idea for her. Choo Choo, instead of drawing the round things by themselves, why don't you draw a picture that has a number of the round things in it? Huh? A picture that has many round things? Yes, Choo Choo, tell me. Where would you see a round cake, round balloons, a round pizza, a happy round-faced baby, and round scoops of delicious ice cream? I know! At a birthday party! The next day, at the drawing competition, Choo Choo drew a picture of a birthday party that had many round things. Round balloons! A round birthday cake! Round scoops of ice cream. Round wheels on a tricycle. A baby with a happy round face. A round pizza for everyone to share. And a round sun that's shining in the sky. Miss Dorothy and the judges were very impressed with Choo Choo's drawing. All of you have drawn pictures of things that are the shapes you have chosen. And you have drawn them very nicely. But Choo Choo has put all her round shaped things in a birthday party scene. Miss Dorothy then announced the winner. Children, you have all drawn beautifully. But Choo Choo has used her imagination and put all the round things she chose in a birthday party scene. And so, the judges have decided to give Choo Choo the prize. Well done, Choo Choo! Thank you! Choo Choo's prize turned out to be a box of round chocolates. Mom, I'm going to share my prize with you. After all, it was you who helped me think and use my imagination. Choo Choo was happy to share the chocolates with her mother. And she felt lucky that her mother had taught her how to use her imagination. One day, all of the mothers went together to meet Miss Dorothy, their children's teacher. Miss Dorothy, Cusley doesn't like eating fruits and vegetables. He always fusses when I serve them. Choo Choo and Cha Cha are the same way. And Chica and Chiku too. Oh dear! Fruits and vegetables are very important. The children need them to grow. I have an idea. Let's try something that will help the children learn to like fruits and vegetables. Miss Dorothy made an announcement in the classroom that day. Children, everyone needs to bring some fruits or vegetables with you tomorrow. The children listen to Miss Dorothy. And they all brought fruits and vegetables to school the next day. I brought an apple, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> That's great, Choo Choo. Now let's have some fun with your apple. Miss Dorothy then carefully carved the apple. 
and turned it into a beautiful swan. The children got very excited. This apple is now a swan. Hooray! Chica had brought a mango. He gave it to Miss Dorothy. Miss Dorothy turned Chica's mango into a beautiful goldfish. Cusley brought some fruits too. I have bananas, kiwis, and grapes. Miss Dorothy took Cusley's fruits. And she turned them into a beautiful tree. Oh, look! This tree has a banana trunk, kiwi leaves, and grapes as its fruit. Yay! Chiku brought a zucchini. She gave it to Miss Dorothy. Here's my zucchini. Miss Dorothy turned Chiku's zucchini into a friendly caterpillar. Yay! Cha Cha brought an orange. He gave it to Miss Dorothy. Here's my orange. Miss Dorothy turned Cha Cha's orange into a snail. Then, Miss Dorothy invited all the kids to eat the fruits and vegetables. Children, we've had a lot of fun with your fruits and vegetables. Now, you must eat them and have even more fun. The children ate the fruits and vegetables, which made them feel very lively. Delicious! Miss Dorothy then told the children more about fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are very good for you. They are full of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients that make you strong and healthy. So, you must eat them every day. That evening, all the children surprised their mothers. Mom, can I have some fruits and vegetables? Me too! <laughs> all the mothers were very happy. Miss Dorothy's idea had worked. And all the children now enjoyed eating fruits and vegetables. had a loose tooth, and she was worried about what would happen when it came out. Mom, my tooth is wiggling. Will it come out? Yes, Choo Choo. Your wiggly tooth is a baby tooth. Baby teeth all fall out as you grow up. 
What should I do with my baby tooth when it comes out? You can leave it for the Tooth Fairy. She'll take it and give you a gift in exchange. The Tooth Fairy? What will she do with my tooth? She'll take it to the sky and turn it into a star. Your tooth will twinkle and shine and make the night bright. Ah! Choo Choo kept thinking about the Tooth Fairy. And she stopped worrying about her loose tooth. Later that day, Choo Choo picked up a crunchy apple. And just as she bit into it, her tooth came out. Huh? Mom, look! My tooth came out! Choo Choo and her mother washed the tooth. You must put this tooth under your pillow. When you go to sleep tonight, the Tooth Fairy will come and take it while you're sleeping. She'll turn your tooth into a star. And in no time, you'll grow another tooth. The new tooth will be stronger and last for the rest of your life. At bedtime, Choo Choo put the tooth under her pillow. Goodbye, little tooth. The Tooth Fairy will come and take you. I'll see you again when you're a star. Then Choo Choo fell fast asleep. When she woke up the next morning, she found that the tooth was no longer under her pillow. Huh? She also noticed a gift lying next to her pillow. It was wrapped in shiny paper. Huh? There's a gift here. I wonder who it's for. The Tooth Fairy has left that for you, Choo Choo. She's also left you a note, too. Really? Choo Choo quickly unwrapped the gift. It was a beautiful doll. There was also a nice new toothbrush. What a pretty doll! And this toothbrush is lovely! I wonder what the note says. Choo Choo then read the note. Dear Choo Choo, Your tooth is now a shining star. You'll grow a new tooth in its place. You must brush it and all your other teeth nicely. Twice every day. You must drink milk and eat plenty of fruits and vegetables too. That's the best way to take care of your teeth. Choo Choo took very good care of her teeth. She brushed them twice a day. And whenever she looked at the stars, she wondered which one of them had been her tooth. Baby Taku was walking on the lawn when he spotted some things in the grass. There was a leaf, some shiny pebbles, a seed, a sunflower, a feather, and a seashell. Huh? Baby Taku picked the things up and carefully put them in his wagon. He then took the wagon to Choo Choo and Cha Cha. Oh, I think Baby Taku wants to know what these things are. I think he wants to know where they come from. I have an idea. Let's take Baby Taku out to learn more about these things. Yes! And we can also show him where they come from. So, Choo Choo and Cha Cha asked their mother if she would take them all out for an adventure. Mom, Baby Taku found some things in the grass. And we want to show him where they come from. 
Will you take us out, please? Yes, my dears. I will. I'll also pack some food so that we can have a picnic. Soon after they headed out, Choo Choo asked her mom to stop the car. She wanted to show baby Taku a tree. Baby Taku, look at that tree. The leaf you found comes from that tree. See? There are lots of other leaves growing on that tree. They are just like the one you have. The leaf you found must have fallen off that tree and blown into our garden with the wind. Baby Taku admired the tree and its leaves. He also touched the leaf which felt very smooth. They then drove up to the mountains. Mother stopped the car next to a stream. There were many pebbles there. And everyone got out to take a closer look. Baby Taku, this stream is bringing pebbles down from the mountain. The pebble you found in our garden must have come from here. When the gardener brought mud for the plants, he must have gathered some pebbles as well. Ah! Pebbles! Next. Mother drove them to an orchard. There were many peach trees growing there. Baby Taku, look at all the peaches growing in this orchard. The seed you found came from a peach, like one of these. Mother then picked a few peaches for Baby Taku, Choo Choo and Cha Cha to eat. These peaches are delicious, Baby Taku. And look! Here in the center is the peach's seed. A squirrel must have dropped the seed you found in our garden after eating a peach. Seed! Mother then drove them to a field. There were many sunflowers growing there. Baby Taku, look at this field. This is where your sunflower came from. A bird must have plucked the sunflower you found and left it in our garden. Mother then drove them all to the beach. The children noticed a seagull flying overhead. Baby Taku, look! The feather you found is from a seagull, like this one. It must have fallen off while the seagull was flying over our garden. where your seashell comes from. We must have brought it home with the sand we collected in our pails last time we were here. Seashell! Baby Taku was very happy to learn where the things he found had come from. He was also happy to have a picnic on the beach with his family. When they returned home, baby Taku gave Choo Choo the seashell to use as a decoration. He gave Cha Cha the pebbles for his rock collection. He 
gave mother the sunflower to put in her hair. Baby Taku then put the feather in his hat. Everyone then got together and planted the seed in the garden. Hooray! 